Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today we're here for the weekly off meta update. So well, something I've been trying to do at least once a week for the standard format is find off meta decks, maybe not necessarily jank, but just brews that uh, deviate from kind of the common deck list that we see each week. We're fairly used to seeing, you know, the likes of Rakdos Lizards, Gruel Agro, um, like Golgari midrange, Atraxa piles, Convoke. So I went through and I tried to find, I scoured the internet, looked at MTGO leagues on tap data, tournament results to see what we had in terms of decks that are a little bit more uncommon. Uh, maybe something that's a little bit different off the beaten track, something you might want to try out in the standard ladder. These typically will have smaller sample sizes, so there's some variability. Uh, they could have worked for one person, it could have worked in a tournament. Uh, maybe not works in like, you know, a hundred game sample, but gives you some ideas of other things you can do in the format. So we're going to look at in part some of the data from untapped. We have some folks that got uh, early mythic with various decks, and then we'll look at some recent MTGO leagues, as well as uh, at least one of the, I believe it was a Japanese uh, game day tournament. Uh, and we'll kind of look from there. So we're going to jump into it. The first deck up, this one is from Batter Blossom. They went 59-32. They peaked at, where's their play history? I think they peaked at like 23 or something. They've been hovering around like top 40 mythic with a black-white life gain kind of bat sub-theme deck. So the deck's got life gain kind of payoff cards in Amalia. We have Elias Akor that can gain you some life, lose you some life. Zorlin as a way to gain some life. Preacher can use life as a resource. Dark Star Augur as a way to have kind of card advantage in this deck. The Zorlin's nice because you could rebuy a whole bunch of stuff. Essence Chandler is a way to get bigger uh, with all the life gain that you have. The Lunar Convocation rewards you for losing life, rewards you for gaining life, and can be a card draw engine. Uh, you have Bat for Hand Hate, and then a bunch of kind of discard and disruption. Bitter Triumph is removal, Cruel Claw Heist is hand hate, Get Lost is removal, Parting Gust can blink your thing, uh, or exile one of your opponent's things. So you kind of get that value. And then you have Aquasots on the top end. Uh, so interesting kind of shell here. Sideboard, Disfigure, just cheap removal uh, for like the more aggressive decks. Hand hate with Duress, Requisition Raid can be used for temporary lockdowns, artifacts, and just counters on your team. Ball for the kind of like the caretaker's talent matchups, just kind of mirror. Uh, you get a copy of a token when they get a copy, and then you kind of gain and drain. Malicious Eclipse is a, a sweeper. Beza is just kind of mid range, kind of aggressive decks. You can kind of break parity, gain you some life back, get you some creatures back, things like that. Children for kind of the mid rangey decks that look to draw a bunch of cards. Aggressive decks when you need a little bit more life gain. And a Season of Burrow, just a flexible all around card, can make you tokens, can return stuff from your graveyard, and can exile non nine permanents. From there, we're going to go to Hellraiser's C, or actually Nithin's, it's Hellraiser combo, 53-35. So this is an is it kind of reanimator-ish-esque reanimator of spells. So we have Capricious Hellraiser. So it is a six mana, four, four, costs Three less if you have nine or more cards in your graveyard. When it enters the battlefield, you exile three cards at random from your graveyard. You choose a non-creature, non-land from among them and copy it. You may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. So you kind of get value there. You have Chandra that can double your spells. You have Season of Weaving that can return each non-land permanent to its owner's hand. So you kind of reset the board. You can reset your Hellraiser. Uh, draws you cards, creates copies, so you could just make copies of your Hellraiser. Sweepers and Ill-Time Explosion. You have Brass's Tunnel Grinder as a way to draw and discard to kind of set you up and then could potentially have it flip for Discover. You can make a bunch of copies of like Hellraiser, like Chandra, have this get copied a bunch of times, make a bunch of copies of this, and then with Bitter Reunion, give it all haste, uh, which is kind of cool. Bunch of interaction early into the Flood Maw, some counters with Phantom Interference three steps ahead. Fortress Tower, Shock is just cheap removal. Moment of Truth just kind of sets up your hand, puts it into the graveyard. Just cheap removal with Fires of Victory. We have Artisan's Talent. Uh, it lets you kind of draw discard, and non-creature spells cost less. And then if a source you control a deal. 
non-combat damage to an opponent or permanent it deals that much plus two so just a way with like your removal to kind of scale up it's more for like the looting effects for the most part sideboard just more bounce within the flood maw graveyard hate removal that also hits a uh, urbrass forge Sainful stroke in here for in negate for counters galvanize to deal with bigger kind of things five damage bombardment as a sweep or brotherhood's end as a sweeper Ral just for the kind of the grindier matchups and then virtue knowledge can double up your etb triggers i'm sorry about the dogs all righty sorry about the dogs they are protecting the house uh we then have pick in pick anxiety they went eight and one so not the largest sample size but we have a golgari food kind of sack ish deck uh, so leveraging some of the fodder for Rothamoth Viper to sack to, or braids, you get some value. Gumdrop Poisoner in here can use the life gain to kind of be removal. Uh, you have Vine Reap Mentor that makes you food tokens, which is vanity, can be removal, food tokens. So a bunch of ways to make incidental value that can then be sacked to these types of effects. You have Teething Wormlet that gets bigger. Um, Sir Ginger can also get bigger as well the cycle you have a lot of food that can be foraged uh bristlebud farmer as a way to kind of get some value you can kind of get in the in indirect kind of card advantage by milling things over you have beseech the mirror uh, that can get you kind of a tutor package as well some flesh gorgers on the top end a lot of fodder for fountain port i could even see playing maybe more than one fountain port you have so many foods that there's just like cheap ways to kind of get card draw with it Various removal options, cut down, bitter triumph, saver, air asunder in here, sweepers with malicious eclipse, thought stalker, warlock is hand hate, tranquil throwback, artifact enchantment, graveyard hate, Hobson Spaloth for heavy discard effects, um, as well as just some life gain, and then an another uh, or an Aklazots for kind of the grindier matchups. Uh, good against the aggressive decks too, just it's a wall that keeps coming back. Um, so then we will go. So this one was a 5 0. We've finally have a 5-0 of kind of is it prowess um we thought like is it would be kind of the deck it ended up being gruel more so uh, so you have some of the elements of the gruel prowess your ember heart swiss spear and slick shot all your red prowess effects you have elusive otter in here another prowess creature uh and then creatures with power less than elusive otter can't block it so it's just allows you to kind of push through damage Might of the Meeks, Monstrous Rage, Shore Up as a blue effect to protect your creatures. Uh, Shock in here. We have Sleight of Hand as some card advantage. And then Storm Chaser's Talent. One of the talents that just hasn't seen that much play compared to some of the other ones. Uh, gives you a Prowess Otter. When it becomes Class 2, you get to return into the Sorcerer from your graveyard. And then Class or Level 3 of the class, uh, whenever you cast Sentence and Sorcerer, you get to create an Otter. This one is a little bit more mana intensive. For a deck that's only playing 20 lines so this might be part of the reason why we're not seeing it as heavily played it is a very powerful level three um but it is six mana for a deck playing 20 lines or brass forge for the heavy removal matchups you have negates just for kind of sweepers big mana decks torch the tower for aggressive decks and along with witch stalker so you could kind of shift into more removal whatever's the most reasonable notably sometimes you will see these decks have access to green mana through the fast lines uh, for Elusive Otter's ability, this one is just kind of foregoing it outside of Thran Portal. You can technically have it on green, but probably not the best to have it with so many individual pips. We then go to Azorius Control. So it is leveraging the kind of Caretaker's talent. I feel like if you're a white-based mid-range deck, mid-range control deck, this is the card to kind of play. But we haven't seen too much in terms of kind of like a tap out or like an instant speed control deck. Elspeth might get lost to deuce, no more lies, three steps ahead, all allow you to play at instant speed. You do have some elements in here of like more tap out, four bezas in here, kind of stonewall your opponent, chrome host seed shark, makes you a bunch of tokens, uh, season a burrow, as well as sunfall, very powerful five drops, and then two to fairy temporal pilgrims. Plays really nice because you minus, you make a token, and then you draw a card off the caretaker's talent, which then makes your spirit token bigger. Uh, so it's kind of a nice self-enabling two-part combo. You draw a card, then it puts a loyalty counter on Teferi. So it's all kind of self-contained in that package, which is really nice. That's uh, Shauna's Tidebinder, activated abilities, 
lockdowns for the aggressive decks, negates for the mid-range control decks, more chrome host seed sharks, uh, just kind of floods the board, artifact enchantment hate with Lauren, and destroy evil for big things or enchantment hate. And then lastly, uh, this list here was from store championship in Japan. It was uh, the Haruya. So this one came in second place. It's a four color legend. So kind of Grixis legends with Honest Rutstein in here. You have Marquesa, Dealer of Death, Commit Crimes. You get to look at top two cards and pay a mana, put one into your hand, other into the graveyard. With Tiny Bones joins up anytime you cast a legend, you commit the crime, which is nice. So you, it's kind of another self-enabling combo. Uh, you have Lazav in here that can generate you clues, exile effects, um, Inti, Draw discard gets you some value there. Aklazots, you have the Rona package with Relic of Legends to kind of tap and tap. So we had like the Slogark version um, that was kind of go it went nuts with the channel lines. We don't have that density of kind of legendary effects, but still kind of generates you a whole bunch of mana, lets you kind of loot through your deck, play a bunch of cards. Urtai in here, Shieldred. So if you have some of the older cards and you're just looking for a deck, this might be something to explore in that case. Uh, Various counters, hand hate, removal like we see, and it's kind of the kill early things, mid-range stuff, big mana stuff. We have Karavek uh, in here, kind of rebuy you some stuff. Aklazots, Hostile Investigator, various removal options kind of scattered in, even Lauren in this deck. Uh, even though there's no white main, you have things like Plaza Heroes that can cast it, as well as Cavern of Souls for human, and then uh, the Relic of Legends also generates you mana. That's it for the week. Some spicier decks, some off-meta decks. Let me know if you're playing anything cool, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.